It's 2024. That means 40 years that I've been exploring the world's most remote places in four-wheel drives in association with the Overland Workshop. Big deal. A really big deal for me. Well, we've reached the halfway point. It's been amazing. The Range Rover's running perfectly. We're going to spend the day here and um, we can replenish our water and I'm going to take a very close look at the, um, at the Range Rover. But no time to waste. Lots to do. Photograph the birds. Attracted by water, these are zebra finch and flying in flocks above common budgerigar. What are these birds thinking as they fly like this? I'm following him, but I'm following you. Why are you following me? I don't know. Look, a politician, but we're going nowhere. I know, follow him quickly. All of the vehicles are in quite bad shape, except for the Range Rover, of course. So we need to do a bit of work to make sure that we reach the end without further trouble. You had a puncture? I had a puncture, yeah. I did stack the sidewall right there. But we could fix it. So far it's holding pressure. We'll wait till tomorrow and see what happens. making sure any of the seeds are out because we've got one left to swell up and I can spray that with water. That's looking really good Rob. Yeah, yeah. a little bit of a clean out. Good job. Yeah, fantastic. This is my cabin air filter. I put that in new before we started. One of the weaknesses, these, uh, this has been reinforced but the base we did not reinforce, it was, it was too difficult. <sighs> we have water to spare. Considering our achievement thus far, I can't help but look back at the origins of this idea. A little more than a year ago, I purchased the Range Rover in Melbourne, did a little bit of work on it, and then drove it right across Australia, unsupported. Last bit to go into the car. What began as a quest to find and purchase, no matter its state, my Range Rover that I sold 30 years ago has led me to this. Sleeping the night curled on the back seat to be woken by the Australian bush calls and being reacquainted with the familiar smell of gear oil. It's been nine weeks since I purchased the Range Rover, blind, from the other side of Australia. Now in Melbourne, I collected it, drove it a bit, spent the last five days working on it, and five days worrying about the journey I'm about to undertake. 3,500 kilometers to my home in Western Australia. Yes, I'm driving it home. Here we go. And you find me now dreading really? the Melbourne morning mayhem as I look forward to that all elusive open road. And now, a year and a half later, I've reached the halfway point on what is probably the toughest route in all of Australia. Range Rover parts come to the rescue again. Pizza handle complete.
how wonderful it is to have done absolutely nothing all day and then to rest. And you just go to God. <laughs> what are they? You'll find out when you eat them, because I ain't got a bloody cloak. <laughs> you, you are the apricot twist you are. Mm. Another one up here. Thanks, Robbie. That's not bad. What a luxury. Mm. Pizza in the middle of nowhere. So I can say I've done something as well. Look at that. Look at the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do another one. Yes. Don't hold back. Oh, no. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> mm. It's the first time on a big trip with my troop carrier and I'm pleased to say that of my 100 litre water tank I still have half remaining. But I am going to fill it up. The track ahead of us is over 100 kilometres longer than the track behind us. That could easily mean an additional two or three days travel. In 2017 from the same water hole we used a ticka 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 siphon. Ah. And I had, to hold, I had to hold the jerry can up here to siphon it down into the tank. This is a little easier. Look how far technology has come. Yeah, look how far <laughs> technology has come. And it's even further in between. Yeah. Kunarawiji is a settlement mentioned and escape route, a place where we can refuel and buy some basic supplies. We are also going to inquire about the reopening of the permit system, closed since the pandemic began in early 2020. We've been completely out of touch for over a week, but it was when we left about to reopen. But the five minute drive there is gonna take a little bit longer than we thought it might. What happened to you, Robbie? The engine needed a rest. <laughs> there was a little bit not enough fuel oh. to get just down there. So close, so close. And when I say close, I'm talking three kilometers or so. <laughs> Oh dear, that's funny. Uh, we thought we would be able to squeeze in and just get in to fill it up. Oh well. So close. Oh God. So close. <laughs> it's like three kilometres to go. Come on in. See? Just feel like it never happened. Time to see how much fuel we've all used. All done? Yep. Yeah, we'll work out the consumptions tonight and work it out. Work it out. It's less than what I thought, because that's yeah. both tanks topped up. 163 litres for both tanks. Yeah. That's very good. Far better than I expected. Oh, that is. 133.3 litres. Now my V8 troop carrier. The speed at which I've seen the needle fall, actually it's been doing quite well. 129.9 litres. That's better than the Hilux. And the Mitsubishi, best of all, at 15.5 litres per 100 kilometres. While we were on the track, the permit system opened. So we've come into Canada Ridgery now and they very kindly let us use their computer and we have purchased our permits and we now have the permission officially as well as just verbally to continue our trip on the Canning Stock Route. Several phone calls later and with some help from the kind locals, by the time lunchtime arrived, so did our permits. All right, the convoy's back on the move. Managed to get some uh, a few supplies replenished at their store, which was actually quite well stocked. It's well after 2 p.m. before we get going. The good news is we don't have to spend another night at well 33 waiting for permits, but the bad news is that our tally so far today is just nine kilometers. So we better get going. That's lucky, that must have only just happened. What's happened there? 
got a water leak. Water leak. has got a water leak on one of the world spots. Fortune oh, well, shines okay, on know. us once again. Find it, Robbie. Uh, can you open my rear drawer? Heiner didn't yeah. stop because okay. of a leak so in the water tank. tank. He stopped because of overheating rear brakes. Yeah. 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 Grab some of that. Yeah. Stay away from the hot stuff. The water <laughs> and don't sit up. Yeah, okay, thank you. I'll try to remember that. There we go. There she goes. Vehicle breakdowns, organising permits on a halfway refuelling point, and camels that insist on staying on the track, the convoy must now make up lost time, and that means driving into the night. But there is another problem with that idea. The Range Rover's lights don't work. I mean at all. I'm trying to strap a torch onto the roof. I don't think it's going to be bright enough, but what worries me more is Heiner. He's going to come and just give us a hard time about the car. I mean, it's just a temp... I'm sure it's temporary. It's nothing, really. We have to try and hide it from him. Robbie. What? They're, what? Working what? They're, what? Working, they're working perfectly. What's with the headlights? We, we what? wanted to admire the sunset. Look. Yeah. Oh, so you I just... Did. You just asked me to drive in front of you with my highlight hold that's on, got on. lights on the back so you can see the track. Hola, look! Distraction! That's no. right! <laughs> yeah. Robbie, look! What? Hi, Beam! Ignore him. I think that's just the reflection. But that's all right, it's, it's not broken, it just intermittently went on night break. That's. You know, they do that sometimes. Well, the thing is... Maybe shifts over. If we hadn't had to stop so long to fix the Hilux, we wouldn't be driving in the night time. Well, Aha. we need lights anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I hate that last yeah. spin on it. <laughs> this is very difficult for Rob. You know what? Yes, I am going to have the aid of the Hilux for lighting. A little bit. Do you? I'm so glad we put this on camera. Let's not talk about it anymore. I, I... But it's not mechanical. But it's electric. Bugger! <laughs> I thought you'd gone. <laughs> Lucas, get home before dark. That's their motto. We just proved it. Again. 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 But how to get that camel off the track? Okay. You just slightly push them to the side so they rotate and then yeah. they run in the bush off they go change their trajectory a little bit and why yeah. you honk the horns yeah i'm gonna let heiner do it and we decided that heiner might have better luck than me Rob is managing to see well enough at the speed I'll never know. It's well after nine when we find an opening and feel a need to set up camp and have a meal. Our dinner has been cooking for the last three hours in our travel buddy ovens. Because of the delays yesterday, we decided to push on to make up time and we managed 84 kilometers yesterday, which is, our, our, our aim has been minimum of 80 and we, we're doing well with that. Juntu Juntu, well 30. It's typical of so many of the wells on the Canning Stock Route. These demarcate the actual wells used by the cattle Drovers, I think drovers is the right word. 
they actually mark the track. Of course, most of them, like this one, are in a state of disrepair, disrepair. But I imagine that if one actually did dig down, one would find water, because they were used to water the cattle. Some of those uh, wells have been rebuilt by four-wheel drive enthusiasts in Australia, and have opened the canning stock route. But one thing is consistent on the entire length of the route, and that is parts and broken components of four-wheel drive littering the track. So in that regard, we're doing quite well there too. back in dune country and the valleys between the dunes are like this. Uh, I know I mentioned that well 33 is the halfway, that's the halfway point because it's a place where you can get water and fuel, but the actual halfway when considering distance if you divide the canning stock route into two parts, it's Horse Creek to Kanarawiji, approximately 808 kilometers, and then from Kanarawiji to its end, 972 kilometers. So the actual halfway point, well, we're about there right now. Can't think about some celebration tonight. And Rob has come up with uh, a bit of an off-the-wall idea. So many of us cooking, throwing the pre-cooked meals in the trouble bodies. You can get Uber out of you. Well, that's going to do check that out. Not the sat point. But Heiner's Hilux is continuing to give us problems with its rear brakes. Just waiting now, um, stopped Heiner's getting out to check the temperature of his brakes. This means everything. Then we need to find a place to camp and try and figure out what the problem is. We cannot continue with uh, in, in its current state, with because uh, what happens is, I mean, you can get you can get away with brakes that are a bit hot and things like that. But the trouble is, if they get too hot, they actually damage the um, the bearing, the bearing grease, etc. Gets hot, and then you lose a wheel bearing, and it then causes all lot of other problems. So it's it's not an option to to continue. It's just plain not an option. Hello, I'm not on fire yet. <laughs> That's a, that's a good start. <laughs> uh, the braking has changed. It feels a lot more defined, the brake point as well, and it's a lot less warm. Yeah, so it must have had something to do with the handbrake. You can hold it like it's yeah. warm. And I did that's a fair bit of braking as yeah. well before I did no braking like, and you couldn't touch it. Like it's warm, but it's not. Like yeah, it should be a bit warm because that, not, you know, it's that's, not, yeah, it's not that section though. I did brake yeah. a fair bit. It's not toasty though. No. Like, we have made a little over 100 kilometers today. And uh, there are not a lot of campsites in this area, open areas where you can actually set up camp in this region. This is again near another well. Heiner is trying to get to the bottom of his uh, handbrake problem. He's, while he's solved the symptoms, he hasn't found the cause and he has of course no handbrake at the moment. And uh, Rob and I are gonna try and fix the lights. So for tonight anyway, our halfway celebrations must take a back seat. Now we've discovered the uh, the switches, the switches um, yeah, the, the falling actual, apart. It's just integrated inside. The actual pin. Yeah. That stands out. That gives you a connection. Yeah. That's actually just worn away. It's not even. It doesn't exist anymore. It, it must have broken it's off because it was a it was a sudden failure. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. gradual, so it must have just broken yeah. off. The question is, of course, should we get Heiner, who fancies himself as a you know, sparky kind of person, um, should we ask him to fix it for us? And we've decided, absolutely not. And you want to know why? I'm so glad I can actually work and cut around on the rangey, the range rover. Why are you, are you that insecure? 
Why? Why are you that insecure that this gives you pleasure? Uh, it's just, it's been talked up so much and it's finally breaking. It's finally doing what it, you know, what we all were waiting for. <laughs> Little things, Lucas switches breaking, falling apart, just really disintegrating into nothing. His lines, but nothing wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> We just nothing to see. He was bored, so we just thought we'd give him something to do. You should have just bought one of those scan grip lights and cable tied it up the roof yeah. and then connected it to the battery box. We got lots again. Yeah. And of course, yet again, it's another eagle that's been nesting under my car. So difficult getting. Three. Rum and coke. This is the bar. We, we gave it a name today. Yeah, well, it's, it's the pub, really. It's a it's a pub. Yeah. We gave it a name today because as you were chocking up your Hilux with the old jerry with can. an old jerry can, a big lizard ran out of it. Yeah. So we're calling it lizard in a can. Lizard in a can. That's that's the name so of that's the, the pub. That's the name of the pub. And Rob will whittle something up. And the reason why we found that name is because we found a jerry can that is currently a wheel chuck for the Hilux that had a lizard in it. Yeah, imagine Andrew would have said that already. <laughs> That's fine, I'm gonna fuck myself. So, in. where did you get the name? <laughs> it, only, it only took us two weeks to mm -hmm. find a pub net. Yeah, Slange. well, we said we're gonna find that somehow. for my grass thing. We think we have found a way to celebrate the halfway point. I wonder if it's gonna work, it's a bit of a long shot. Guys, are we going with the Uber idea? Are we going with the Uber idea? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Oh, Rob? Reckon. Yeah? yeah? We reckon. Yeah. You know, give it a go. Yeah. Okay, I'll call, I'll call Gwen. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes. We've got an idea. Can you help us out? All right. I need you to contact Uber. Okay, four steak rolls and we want them delivered well 23. So you're gonna to have to phone somebody in Newman. That's the, that's the nearest town. And this is close to one of the escape routes. Oh, about, I don't know, four hours, five hours from Newman. So I know it's a long shot. I know it's a long shot tonight. Six o'clock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not being silly. So great to see that you're also going to clean up the kitchen today. I'm a creative cook. I'm not the cleaner. <laughs> All right. Gwen's going to try and organise it. We'll see what happens. Did he bring the rum? Mm -hmm. Did he get rum? The ASPW trap. <laughs> Off to the patrol owners club with him. I think it should be the... <laughs> <laughs> I just don't trust them because I know what they're going to do again. <laughs> Action. I think oh, it should... <laughs> <laughs> Action. Uh, I think it should be the South African Progeras Owners Club. Progero. 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 Take 47. Take 97. 
I think it should be the South African Pajeros Owners Club. You say this is your line? I think it should be the South African Owners Pajero. I also got it wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> and action. I think it should be the South African Pajero's Owners Clubs. <laughs> <laughs> You're hopeless. <laughs> you're wasting film. Yeah, you're wasting film. I think it should be the South African Pajero's Owners Club. No, 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 Pajero's. It's Pajero. Pajero Owners Club. Pajero! Right, it's there. All right, try it again. I think it should be the South African Pajero Owners Club. Well done. Wow. Wow. Well, <laughs> all these emotions, I'm in tears. <laughs> Oh, bugger, the microphone was off. The whole time? I'm kidding. <laughs> Our challenges today. Do at least 85 kilometers. Keep going despite the ongoing problems with the Hilux's brakes. And be at well 23, the Newman escape route, in time for what might happen or might not happen. But we have to be there by at least four in the afternoon to have any success with the Uber idea. It's salty. Salty. Well 26 is not great water, but luckily enough our tanks are still moderately full. Tomorrow we'll be passing Georgia Boar, which promises very good water. Having a bit of a drive this morning. Uh, well, because I felt like it. And I've got a knock in the, in the uh, troop carrier's rear suspension on it. I'm trying to sort out what it, what it is. I thought, well, oh, Get the Range Rover a go. And you know something, if it wasn't for the rattling of the tank, it's very, very rattly in here because of the tank. The, this ride is phenomenally good. It just, it just glides over these these corrugations. And it's a big ride. While Heiner has expressed interest in doing some more major investigation into the axle problems with the Hilux, we're on track for Dindins. It's our Uber. And no, not a chance. Are you our Uber driver? Are you going? Are you our Uber driver? I am indeed. You are indeed? Yes. You're our Uber driver? Yes, 1,500 Ks. And, oh, I thought you were going to say it was $1,500. <laughs> it is, of course, our good friend, Sean Elbertat. We back. call him Uber Eats because he is such an outstanding <laughs> chef. Now, I made it. Bring me food, ah. starving boy. <laughs> That's cool, man. And we hope he's come to feed us. Johnny, yes, beautiful. How's right. things? Yeah, good. <laughs> good, looking good. Ah, thanks. I just ran up a mountain and back, so oh, beautiful. You definitely That's need a shower good. tonight. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can't smell it. <laughs> We've moved from the camping spot at Well 23 to Georgia Bore. Much nicer campsite. Far, far nicer. There is beautiful, sweet water at the well and the guys are off looking for firewood. We've set up camp early in order to take another close look at the Hilux's brakes. And I've decided to, well, do my bit, help out by avoiding shots of the Range Rover when filming work on the Hilux. And avoid bringing up the fact that they're using the Range Rover's spare wheels as wheel chocks. 
It's not working very well, is it? Maybe I should just go and do my own thing. This is a fully certified Bush Jack Axle Stand. Designed by a fabricator. Yeah. <laughs> Fabric SWA 4 ton. It's got a crack on it. How did you uh, work out the design for the new Axle Stand job? Oh, lots of R&D. Yeah. Yeah. So we're out here. Plenty, for. Of, plenty yeah, of practice. Really yeah. <laughs> then again, I don't drive a Hilux, so I don't need it. Oh, oh nasty. nasty, nasty, nasty. But I agree because mm. I'm in a Range Rover. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. The axle stands will allow the weight of the vehicle to be resting on the axle without any wheels on it. More? That will help with diagnosing the problem, hopefully. Okay. Oh yeah. So if we if we do have to leave the Hilux here, we have to flip it on the roof. It's Canning Stocker at rules. What to do? How to look helpful? I know, I'll sort out the drinks. Ah, ah, John's already done it. I'll make the fire. No, John always does that. I'll point the camera at things. That's what I'm best at. You've removed it. Yes, yeah, so what we found is there are auto adjustment bars in there. And on this side, what it did was it adjusted. The other side, the adjustment didn't work and adjusted it that tight that the brakes wouldn't release anymore so they're always touched. What we've done now is we took the self-adjustment bars out. Just a thought though, when we're not experts okay and this is the brakes so we are guessing and we shouldn't guess but right now as it stands this Hilux is going nowhere so this is a we're going to experiment and test and make sure everything is safe but it's a good start yeah well it is a bush fix it's soon a bush as, as soon as i'm back in town it, that will be checked and factory parts will be yeah, put in it's a bush fix yeah Anna, huh? you're going to test drive it yeah do you want me to follow you in the range rover in case you need rescuing no i'd rather die And of course, what we've all been waiting for all day, yes. our Uber Eats from Sean. Did you not tell Gwyn to order steak? I told order Gwyn to order four steak rolls. Right. I mean, this is nice, but... Typical bloody Uber. I'll we'll never get it right. Yep. <laughs> it's jolly good, but it's not what we ordered. I would send it back. I give you a after brief off. I've eaten it. Oh, after you've eaten it. Yeah, no, after we've yep. eaten it, we should send it back. Good morning, let me reintroduce you to the crew. This is Heiner. He likes running in caves. See, that's why he sleeps in a swag and does those things. And this is Rob. Rob likes wood. Love wood. And this is John. He likes making fires. And the newest member of our crew is Sean, and he likes cooking. Yes, indeed. And I'm making it. Oh, for God's sake, shut up! It is actually jam today. I can't budge it. <laughs> go on, take the camera. Go on, then I'll take, then the, take camera. the camera. Let's, it's still let's rolling. Let's see if you can. Point it at me. I will. Go on, then. Yeah. See the magic touch. Well, 
What? Say something. No, yeah. Say thank you. Good. Jeremy, thank you. it's obviously not all about the size, it's about the technique. <laughs> Our caveman speaks again. So Andrew, today we're making an omelette. And I'm gonna do it just like Rob. I am now the toast making part of this highly complex operation. Um, because these, some of, some of these children want toast. Toast coming in. You're a slow toaster, this one. So I don't know why you let Sean cook. Why? Oh, apparently now his cooking is better than mine. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you can't do a decent pizza, though. Yeah, bait him. Good. Yeah, bait him. Well, you can get real on out of him tonight. <laughs> I'm just putting all the stuff in here. I have to help him putting the Hilux back together again, that's not. Thank you for your participation. It's not a problem at all. Any time, which will probably be in about an hour and a half. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> if it is that long. So you're gonna do a test drive, are you, before we leave, or are we just gonna hit, hit the track? Just gonna drive. My omelette is ready. It's not that much fuel. I was thinking, why do a test run now, waste fuel? We'll do a test run anyway. Andrew, uh, Heiner and John have decided to help us out graciously ah. with some modifications on the Range Rover. Okay. We've, we've made it suit Rob so, a lot better. See what you think. <laughs> what do you think? I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed it's either. Like, it's a beautiful thing, a thing of beauty, and you've defiled it. Yeah. Just like its driver. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, Rob, hold the camera, point it at me, watch and learn. Hold it down, give it a thumb, while you're holding it down. Now, is that so hard? Well, obviously. In 1990, a mineral exploration company set up a camp at the junction of the Talawana track and the Canning Stock route, where we are now, to evaluate the area for mineral deposits. The tradition in the company was to name camps after the most recently born child of those working on the project. Unlike uh, Well 33, where we had a great big reservoir of water, here we actually have to pump it from the ground, put it in a bucket, and then pump it from the bucket into our individual vehicles, which means individually we all have to have a little bit of a morning workout. In the case of the newly born daughter of the senior geologist gave her name to the new camp, Georgia Camp. The bore was drilled to supply the Georgia Camp with good water, which is both plentiful and fresh. Look, she's gushing. She's a gusher. Can I do you the honours, Andrew? Please do. I'm going to do you with the left arm, Shawnee. So good to be back on the track again. Our water tanks are full with that beautiful sweet water. But it doesn't take long for one of us to have to stop to fix something. And guess which one of us it is? No, nope, you're wrong. It's me. It's the troop carrier. My dashboard is lit up like a Christmas tree. ABS. Ah, uh, this is an ABS. One of my ABS cables has been ripped off. I bet. And that cable there is the ABS sensor cable and it's fine. It's fine. So your ESP doesn't work anymore when your wheel speed sensors don't work. So have you seen is that cable ripped off? No, nope. both front cables are correct. Right, steering wheel is still straight? Yeah. Okay, here's a very heavy stick wedged into the axle itself. Brake. 
Oh yeah, that completely shredded your ABS plug cable here. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Hit it perfectly. Sure. It came up in between the spring and the shock. That yeah. is the most impossible angle and then hit the cable straight away and completely ripped it apart. But Sean yeah. never seems to waste a minute. The moment the convoy stops, his kitchen opens. Do you want to know what you're going to have for lunch? What is it, Shawnee? Oh, he just marinated steak with sweet potatoes. Garlic, ginger, and chili. I love you. Oh. You know your hat's on the wrong way around. Yeah, no. I, for one, am grateful that uh, my trip carrier is not overly electronic. The failure of that system hasn't meant that the car stopped or even gone into limp mode. It's still running perfectly. For now, my brakes are as cold as the cold I've ever seen. That is very, very good news. We were thinking serious potential yesterday that um, Heiner was going to have to leave the group. It was a a real concern and I think that was kind of what um, spurred him on to you know, we just we've just got to do a proper diagnostic and that means we need to get the axle in the air put it on axle stands and uh, you know strip both uh, brake drums and study them both because one's working one isn't what makes them different and that was where they they came up with the um, with a with a solution. Yeah. I have problems with your car, Andrew. Yeah, I've I, I am. I've never driven with um, high, uh, parabolic springs before. Do they have? Do they make a sound that is? What I'm saying is, is the sound from the back suspension is unfamiliar. I, I've never experienced before, and I there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. And it's not constant either, uh, Heiner. Does it happen on the corrugations? On the yep. corrugations, and like, you know when you're just, every now and then, you're on the corrugation, and you'll hit just a little bit of a, a swoop, a whoop, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's solid. Okay, now if you just pop around to the other side. It's, this is Lewis, the one underneath. But I don't think it's that that's causing the noise. It's really not the troop carrier's day, and the day isn't finished yet. Might need a bit of help here to get this tree out of my roof. It's kind of jammed in. I need secateurs or something to cut it. When did you plant that? Huh? <laughs> grew quickly, didn't it? <laughs> it? She grew really quickly. Yeah. How the hell? Have um, you got it right in the bracket? Yeah, it's right in there and it's wedging against the, <laughs> the roof there. Uh, and what I need to do is cut it right there and then try and pull it out from the top. Oh, right. Uh, I'm worried about breaking the roof because as you're doing that, that roof is bending. That that uh, oh, piece of roof is... Gutter. Yes, it's, it's bending the rain gutter doing that. So. No, that's not going to break. There you go. You can replant it later. I'll, I'll take it home and replant it. The terrain is beginning to flatten out, and I sense the approach of Australia's most hackneyed place name Lake Disappointment. As part of the 40-year celebration, Overland Workshop is offering a 40% discount on all courses and all subscriptions. However, there are 25 to go around each week. Once they're gone, they're gone. See you in the next episode.